Hello guys, welcome to SandVFX. Today we are back with another exciting tutorial using Rayfire. So here's what we'll be creating today. Uh, okay, you must have also watched the preview on my YouTube channel. So we'll create this kind of integrating text tutorial. So we'll begin up by creating our text as usual name it sand vfx and this time font as Arial black because it is quite thick and let me just rotate it hit the angle snap and just 90 degree okay then I'll add in a extrude modifier with about maybe 8 amount I think this is enough okay and let me apply a simple material right now also turn on age faces and turn off selection bracket by hitting the J key then we'll convert it to editable poly and select all of our faces go down here and set my ID to 2 you can set it to any number except 1 because once we fragment it with ray fire all the newly created faces we have selection ID 1 so that we have to apply separate materials to inner faces and outer faces so that we are setting the selection ID for outer one to 2 or any other except 1 and the inner faces will have selection ID 1 by default okay let's open up Rayfire Rayfire floater add this object to dynamic objects and go to fragmentation I'll just use about 250 fragments and just fragment it okay I think it will be enough enough amount of detail if you want you can also create a lot more smaller pieces but uh, be careful your scene might get uh, crashed if you create too ma many small pieces okay once that we have fragmented that let me just show you what I was talking about the selection IDs before if I go to faces you can now see that all the newly created faces are selected and down here the selection ID is 1 so that means if I just hit the selection ID 2 and select ID then we'll, uh, we can select all the outer faces which was previously before fragmenting our objects and if I set it to 1 and select ID then we can select all the inner faces so this way we can apply separate materials to our different faces okay so let me undo this okay then the next thing we are going to create a wind okay then I want to take this option called range indicator and I want spherical not the planner and increase the icon size a bit let me go to front view and hit the F3 key to turn on Seated and F4 to turn on edge face. I just want to use seated. Okay. Okay. Let me just reduce the size a bit. A bit like this. And I want to reduce the strength to 0 0.5 because I think one will be too much for our scene. Okay. Then I want to increase my time segments to 250. Okay then I'll just auto key set the key at 0 and again set the key at 20 frames and move about one maybe 200 frames and just move my wind maybe up to about here okay yeah, I want it to be about the middle so it will affect all of our pieces okay now let me also again get back to refire floater and I already have all my fragments added to my dynamic objects so I just need to add my wind to simulation properties add it down here and set my end frame to 250 and down here I want to turn on my home grid as ground so my objects won't fall below this grid level then again I want to turn on deactivate static dynamic objects and activate by force so that our objects will be only affected after this wind uh, 
has its impact on our object. So let me just bake my simulation and see what happens. Okay, once the wind uh, touches it, our pieces are affected. Okay, our pieces are scattering around, but that's not what I want. I want the pieces to fly up. So for that, what I need to do is set my gravity to negative number. So let me set it to negative one, and then again bake my simulation. okay now we have our pieces uh, flying up in the air since we have our gravity negative our pieces won't fall okay let me play it till the end it's looking pretty good Okay, almost done. Okay, we are done. So then now we have our objects all animated together. Okay, so we don't need this uh, wind anymore. So let me just delete this, or maybe just uh, hide it in case we might need it before later on if we are not satisfied with these uh, fragments. Okay, let me turn on A spaces again. Okay, the animation is looking good, but uh, the effect we are going is not what we have now. So we want our pieces to fall down and create our text. So now we have our pieces destroying our text. So we just want to reverse our animation like this. So for that, I'll select all my pieces right here, go to Graph Editor, Dope sheet. So let me let make a little bit more room here. Okay, then select all my pieces from here. We have about 200 fragments, and then select all these keyframes, and go to time. Oops, sorry, time and reverse. So then now we have our animation playing backward. Oops. I got something really different. Really sorry for that. Let me just undo this. Okay, we have our regular animation. Select our, our fragments. Go to animation. I'm sorry, graph editor, dope shit. And I think uh, there is some mistake up here. Okay. We'll just select again all of our animation then I'll just uh, uh, just wait for a while then we have this option so let's go to animation and reverse let us play it so now we have our animation playing backward so previously we had little issues but it's fixed now okay so that's how we reverse our animation using the dope sheet okay once we have done our simulation I don't think we'll need Rayfar anymore so the next thing is about the rendering so let me go ahead and open a material editor so for the first we'll create a kind of metal text for the outer look so let me go down here and select V-Ray material diffuse I'll set it to pretty dark gray okay and I want some reflections as well. And also set my reflection glossiness to maybe 0 0.8 and increase the subdivision to about maybe 14 will do fine. Okay, I don't think I'll need anything else. So, and let me go select another slot and here I need a V-Ray light material. And I'll select kind of a alloy orange color like this okay so we need to apply this to our scene so let me go to another slot and here I'll get material and get a multi sub object material so remember that our interfaces have selection ID 1 and the 
out of faces I have selection ID 2 so out of faces I want to set this material so let me name it um, out of faces um, material and this one inner face material okay now let me drop this one to 2 okay and this one to sorry drag it to ID 1 okay so let me play the animation oops sorry I have not applied the material yet so select all the pieces and apply this multi sub object material okay so now you can see that we have this yellow color inside and this gray metal type of look outside okay if you want you, you just don't need to create this um, light material but it uh, looks pretty good when we render let's do a quick render as well see okay it's looking quite nice at the moment also but we have a lot more to control so let's get ahead and open up our render settings and go to indirect illumination and turn on global illumination and also turn on my ambient occlusion or maybe I may not need that because we will be adding a V-ray light into it also down here to environment I want to turn on GI environment okay now let me just uh, create a V-ray plane V-ray and create a V-ray plane okay open up material editor right here I want to use Vray material as well and just set it pure white and apply this to our Vray plane next thing we'll go to lights down to Vray and use our Vray light maybe about this size I just want to rotate it but remember you better not scale it with this scale tool if you want to increase the width and height you have to increase it from here otherwise you'll mess up with your unit setups our unit settings you'll not get an uh, accurate result so let me just move this back back okay I think about here will be fine and let me go ahead and render my scene once again okay okay looking pretty good let me cancel this and go to setup right here down here I want to use a uh, V-ray frame buffer okay go to indirect elimination down here I think we don't have anything to play around right here and uh, our light is not, fe not affecting our scene so let's go down here to global switches and here I want to turn on my default turn on my lights or maybe just uh, off uh, my default lights okay and go down just uh, see a quick render another render okay it's uh, a little more darker let me just cancel this and I think uh, it will look better if we just turn off this GI environment and just do a render so you can just uh, test around with different types of settings which one looks better spending more time okay this one looks good this one is what we are after okay but you can see that our light material is not illuminating much light into our scene so let's go to material to light and let me increase this uh, color intensity to about 10 so that we'll have enough amount of light illumination into our scene okay. now you can see that our color is looking yellowish but that's okay it's fine okay now we have a lot more illumination into our scene Okay, let me just cancel this. So let us go a little uh, more beyond using this uh, V-Ray light material. We'll just use a V-Ray blend material and blend it with a simple V-Ray material. 
I just get a V-Ray blend material. And another here, I will create a V-Ray material with uh, orange color. Okay. And I want to blend these two together. So I'll just set it to my base material, this uh, orange color, and um, drag this uh, light material to coat 1. Okay, so that we can blend these two together. We can blend it uh, with this uh, color right here. As we go on more black, we'll get this base material, and as we go on more white, we'll get this light material. So that we can set about um, really dark, so that we'll have a little bit of light with this color. Maybe at about this one. Okay. Let me just drop this plain material to down here. Okay and render it once again let's see how it's gonna look so now we are getting that orangey feel again I think the blend amount is too much okay it still have a little bit of illumination right here let me just cancel this and go down here you may want to experience a little bit more to get the better result and render it okay we have a bit more il illumination right now I think it will be enough or if you want a little more illumination you can play around with this uh, light material you can bump this intensity maybe to about 15 and do another render okay I think it's uh, looking good now okay that's getting better okay we have this um, yellow right here that's fine okay for the better result you might wanna bevel your text um, at the first uh, I just use extrude instead of extrude you can use bevel so that you'll have your aged kind of glow like in my scene right here I have added the bevel so that it's looking quite nice okay once that you have done experimenting with your colors blending and your render setups there's not much to work around here but you can really try on and get some pretty interesting result once that you have done you might just uh, render out a scene just your active time segments save it into a T file or JPEG whatever you wish and then just hit render save them in a sequence okay then we'll move into After Effects we'll bring our uh, render sequence I have this render sequence that I did previously so I don't want to re-render my scene again it's the pretty much same one so I'll just uh, import my footage I have rendered them out in TIFF sequence and don't forget to check this option and open up I want it straight unmatted okay then I can just go ahead and interpret my footage and I just don't want 30 frames per second I maybe I'll use 24 frames per second and drag it into my composition let me set my bits per channel to 16 depth okay so now we have our scene right here it's uh, pretty much different I got it I just experienced I'm uh, sorry I just experimented with a little more these settings around here and got different results you can get a different and more interesting result than mine so you can just experiment on that I don't think I need to do that one by one okay so it's uh, looking good so what we'll do is add in more color correction and more glow to our materials okay it's looking good so what we'll do is first of all duplicate our text layer and then add in a uh, effect called set matte to the top layer let me just solo this layer so you can see what I'm doing so here we have use for matte and I'll set it to saturation so that we only have these 
highly saturated color into this top layer okay so once that done I can add in a flow material to this okay so we can see that we have a lot more glow right here so I can control this also little bit of radius and a little less grill glow threshold maybe up you can see you get a different result with this okay so these are the parts where you can experiment on your own to get the perfect result okay also I want to add my glow to bottom layer as well so you can see it's too much ex uh, intensity is too high so let me just increase the glow threshold and bump up the glow radius so that we get a little bit of this orangey color around like this okay then we can create a new adjustment layer up here and add in a curves adjustment and I want to make my scene a little more darker so that our glow looks better okay okay so it's um, it looks good now let me do a quick preview so, oh, let's view it in full screen okay uh, it's looking quite good okay now we can just um, render out a scene add to render queue or if you want to play more you can just go ahead and play around and get the best result that you can okay that's it for the tutorial I hope you guys enjoyed it um, and it also helped you guys um, I will be back with more tutorials coming up and also I have left uh, glue features in Rayfire basic series I will complete that soon and also publish that one and hope I'll bring more new exciting and interesting tutorials so don't forget to subscribe and hit like on Facebook to get uh, notified on new tutorials and upcoming sneak peeks and so on so see you then have a great time